Welcome back. I'm trying to complete every quest in old school RuneScape without the use of guides, plugins, or the wiki on an Iron Man. Oh yeah, and this is my first Iron Man. This is unguided. Before we get into this video, I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support. We recently hit 1k subscribers, which is absolutely mad, and I've just become a YouTube partner as well. This is crazy. I've only been doing this for like four months, and I've never done a YouTube channel before. I love reading all the comments, all the engagement, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, massive thanks. Let's get into the video. Last episode, we spent about six hours making the magic glue we need to fix the machine in the eyes of Gloffrey Quest. Now we've got the glue, let's actually use it. Let's repair this bloody machine. We fixed it. It seems to be working now, though it does appear to be locked. What the hell is that? 18, in like a coin slot, this freakish hand over here. Right, I don't know what that is, let's go and talk to Brimstall. Oh, what's this? The exchanger. Okay, there's some more stuff here. No coin selected. You need to insert some disc. Ah, oh, okay, I forgot about that. That purple thing I've got in the bank. Let's talk to him first. I fixed the machine. But I still don't think it's actually activated. There appears to be some sort of lock on the front. I think I know what the discs are for though. Maybe I should put a disc into the slot and see what happens. I found those crystal discs I mentioned before. Not quite the same as the ones that Hazelmere gave you, but they look similar in size and weight. Here we go. They also look as if they might fit in the slots on both of the machines. Maybe I should try it out. Right, let's run to the bank and grab my purple one. All right, let's use this exchanger. Whatever this means. Right, so what does that do? Insert coin. Oh, hello. A violet circle. What does that mean? So I think what I have to do is unlock it to get an 18. I think that's like a sided thing. Um, what's that? 10, 3, and 4, 17. Well, you can only fit one at a time. A little bit confused by that. Okay, a green circle and a red circle. I mean, let's get that and then see what sticking those things does. Oh, I'm incredibly confused by this, I'm not gonna lie. What does the colors mean? Oh, it's this thing, isn't it? I forgot about this, this little diagram on the side. Oh, okay, hold up. What does this mean? So, red means one, and then does it multiply the amount of sides that it has? 18, I'd need 18. Does that mean if I would put, put these two circles in, I'd get one orange circle? Yeah, all right, okay. Is that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that doesn't work. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, 12, 18. If I've got a purple triangle, is that what it means? Yeah, let's try that. So I need a purple triangle. How would I get a purple triangle? Ah, indigo triangle, that's what I need. And then we stick that in there. I think that worked, no? Yeah, there we go. What a big brain. I have a big brain. Right, um, now what do I do? Operate it? I'm a bit scared to, to be honest. Oh God, was that not the end of it? Oh, I thought that was the end of it. Okay. Okay. So I'll be honest, I tried to edit this section up to make it entertaining and it wasn't. It was horrible. This was 20 minutes of pure guesswork, figuring out how this fucking exchange machine works. And to this day, I still have no idea how it does. I've sped it up for your sake as well as mine because watching this back was painful. Imagine what we just did to open this thing up, but tenfold. Honestly, if this machine comes up again in a later quest, I think I might cry. Anyway. Is that what I need? Green? Blue! That is what I need. Put that in there. Oh, it's just changed! What the fuck? Am I mad? That just changed. Okay, this is random, I think. Let's keep putting this in. Yeah, okay, this is random. I definitely saw a blue circle though. So I need a blue circle or a red pentagon. There we go. Right, I think I've got everything I need. Uh, so that one goes in there. One of them in there. This one goes in here with a blue circle. Nice. This one goes in here. This one. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, it's all green. Right, activate machine. Yes! Let's go. All right, we're gonna see. A little cutscene going on. Huzzah! I knew you'd work it out. Wait, what's happening? Oh my, oh, what the fuck is that? Okay, so that little fluffy creature was not, it was not a fluffy creature. What do I need to do now? Well, it seems that Izzy was not so cute after all. How awful. Izzy just wandered into my cave. He was cute and friendly, so I kept him. He seemed very curious. I liked the companionship. To so be keeping an eye on you while you do important magical research. I suppose it has, I hadn't thought of it like that. King Nano has one, and I think there's one by the gate, and I'm sure I've seen a few more wandering around. All places to keep an eye on what's been going on in the stronghold. I think I'm beginning to understand where you're going with this. Yeah, spies, mate. There you go. You better tell the king what's going on. It's all kicking off now. Oh, there's a little creature with the kings. Let's talk to him. The Aprosandra gnomes have planted these creatures as spies to watch what's going on in the stronghold. Oh, the Aprosandra gnomes, that's the... 
That must be the ones that the the, the dude, the magic dude, I've forgotten his name now. Gloffrey, the main character of this quest line, I don't know how I forgot that. Just reactivated a machine that was built by Oaknock that dispels illusions, and now these creatures' true form that are revealed. Now we know what he's been up to all these years. Never trust a mage. Well, all these creatures must be removed. We cannot allow the Apresendrons to spy on us anymore. How many are there of these things? We'll find them all and dispatch them now. Okay. Bonk that one in the head. Saw one just out the front here. How many are there of these things? Well, there's obviously one in Brimsdale's little hideout, so we'll go there. Oh, it's gone. Oh, I just noticed that that, that thing has got a, there's a crystal bridge there now. Oh, wow, this is cool. Ah, oh, cool. I did not know this existed. Bow of Fardheim, then. Fardheim, then. That's like an upgraded version of the crystal bow. I'm going to have to get me that at some point. Probably going to do like a little up and down maneuver throughout the entire place, because otherwise I'm going to miss stuff. Hey, got all of them. Nice. Right, let's head back to the king. There were six in total. Thanks for your help. Broomstale tells me that you helped him a lot find out what was going on. Yeah, pretty much. He did nothing. Well, I have many things to think about. Why are Pissandrons spying on us and what are they planning? Certainly worrying. And whoever sabotaged the machine couldn't have been far from here. Are the gnomes here rules to spies? Indeed, that's another thing that worries me. I have something you might like. It's passed down to me from king to king. It belonged to Oaknock. He proclaimed that only a hero of the gnome should have it. I think you count as a hero. Give you a small crystal seed. Nice. Okay, 12k magic, 6k runecrafting XP. That's very decent. 2.5k woodcutting, some construction, and a crystal seed. I wonder if a crystal seed is... I could build a dining room. I wonder if that crystal seed is um, to do with the maybe the crystal bow? Crystal saw seed? Oh, that's something else. Okay, I don't know what that is. Can be sung into a mystic, magical crystal crystal saw. Interesting. All right, well, fuck that for now. And now that we've completed that, we only have one more quest to go, and that is Monkey Madness. Now, before we start Monkey Madness, there's some preparation that needs doing. I need 43 prayers to unlock overheads, and I'm currently on level 32, so how much XP do I need? Well, I'm starting at 18,103 XP, and I don't know how much level 43 is in terms of XP, but I do know that I have 44 defense. That's currently 56,000 XP, so let's assume each level is around 5k at this point, and guess that we need around 52k XP to get to 43 prayer. This means we need to gain 24,897 prayer XP. To work out how many bones I need for this, I went back and looked at the footage when I used the dragon bone on the Chaos Altar back in one of my earlier episodes. You get 252 XP per dragon bone, and I think it's a 50% chance to keep the bone, meaning on average, each bone will grant me 378 XP. That means that the 24,897 XP is roughly 65.8 dragon bones. Let's get started. So I decided to use the spot that I know best for getting dragon bones, and that is the blue dragons in Tavoli Dungeon. So here I am to get in the jail key so that I can actually get the dusty key from this guy and get into the correct part of the cave. I've just been here for a little while now, and I just got this scaly dragon hide. I have not got a clue what this is. Never seen it before. I thought maybe it's those new rain shields that they introduced a while back, um, but yeah, not sure. Anyway, we stayed here for a while and ended up getting around 70 dragon bones, and now we need to run them to the chaos altar. Probably the most terrifying thing considering these things probably took me about two hours to get, so yeah, fingers crossed we don't die. Alright, there we go, 43 prayer, and with that we have unlocked all three protection prayers. Uh, I don't actually know which one's going to need, but I thought I'd get them anyway. Now it's time to start Monkey Madness. Or is it? Not yet. There's one more thing I want before we take on Monkey Madness 1. This is probably going to be the most dangerous quest I've done so far, and I haven't done it for maybe 7 or 8 years, so I can't remember where that danger takes place. I haven't got guides that tell me to prepare food and potions, so I need a lifeline. And that lifeline is a ring of life. If you've been watching for a while, you might be thinking, oh, but you've got a ring of life. We still get it after the Lost Tribe quest. Yeah, well, actually, I lost that when I was in Winter Todd. One of the braziers broke at the same time the cold hit me. And next thing you know, I was in Lummy. So we need a new one. Unfortunately, to make a new one, I need to get six crafting levels and ten magic levels. So I'll do the crafting first by making my trusty gold bracelets, then sell them to use that GP to buy fire strikes to hopefully get me from 47 to 57 magic. Let's go. So I'm starting off with around 400 gold ore. So hopefully this gets me to 43 crafting. I just finished up doing the gold bars and I've got 444 gold amulets and unfortunately that only got me to 41 crafting so we still need like another probably 8.5k XP so I'm gonna go mine some more gold and then be back in a bit when I've got a couple hundred more gold. Alright so we just got 43 crafting, accidentally missed the recording it but that is enough for us to now make diamond rings so let's go and grab a ring mold. Alright now let's head over here, make diamond ring. There we go. Right, we've got two diamond rings. Now, 
I need to get 57 magic. So I thought what I would do is sell the gold amulets that I'd made. But actually, last episode, we became a runecrafting pro. And we are only now one level away from doing Guardians of the Rift. So I think instead of buying runes, I could just make them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and do the Temple of the Eye quest, which I believe allows me to then get into Guardians of the Rift. So let's head over to the wizard just north of Alcarid. We start this quest by talking to Wizard Person in Alcarid. She's come across a thousand year old amulet and would like help tracing its origins. To do this, we first need to visit the Zamrakian Mage in Varok. Right, let's talk to the mage. I need help with an amulet. Given up abyssal energy, I was hoping you could help me work out where it came from. Then where did you get the amulet? Bought it from an archaeologist. Show it to me again. He casts a spell upon it. Very well, but first you must do something for me. Bring me a bucket of water and a strong cup of tea. A strong cup of tea? That's right. See, so just north of here can give you one. He owes me, in fact, so just tell him Herbert sent you. <laughs> Wait, your name is Herbert? <laughs> Major Zamorak's called Herbert. All right, let's go get him a bucket of water and a cup of tea. Could I have a strong cup of tea? Herbert sent me for one. Herbert strong cup of tea are actually just my regular cups of tea, but if it makes him happy. Okay, cool, so we've got a strong cup of tea, and now I need a bucket of water. Let's grab a bucket. There is uh, some water source just down here. All right, let's go back to Herbert. Okay, cool. So we're going to get teleported. Oh, fuck. Okay, we're going to get teleported to the Abyss. I do not want my graceful on. I'm going to run to the bank real quick. Let's head back to Herbert and he can teleport us to the Abyss. Yeah, what was the bucket of water for? While time passes slow in the Abyss, the initiate maintaining the rift has still been there for quite a while. He needs a good bath. I've got to chuck a bucket of water over this dude. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, just chuck the bucket of water over him. Herbert said you needed a wash. The amulet has given off abyssal energy. I need to cast a spell to tell me where it came from. This spell will allow me to triangulate the origin of the amulet. I'll need your help. You see the energy that's just emerged from the rift. Work out which order it goes in. What does that mean? It does not respond to your touch. It reacts strangely to your touch. Okay, cool. So it's one of these sort of games. Oh, that's a good guess. All right, nice. I think we got it. There we go. Dark Mage pauses for a moment. He hastily pulls out a scroll and scribbles something on it. Okay, cool. So this scroll will teleport us right there. I do not know how to get out of here, so I'm going to have to just teleport home, I think. Right, let's head back to Herbert. Oh no, I should take it to the wizard person. Any luck with that amulet? Here we go, I've got the incantation that could lead us there. And she quickly makes a copy for herself. The source of this amulet must be an ancient teleport matrix to the runic altars, just like the one the Zia might have in the abyss. So we need three wizards to cast this incantation, and we need to go to the wizard's tower to get them. Head to the wizard's tower and show the incantation to Cedridor. I have a couple of things to prepare first, but I'll join you there soon. Hello. Uh, I need your help with an incantation. A teleport that could potentially take us to the ancient teleport matrix. Person needs three other wizards to be able to perform the incantation. Well, he's asking if I got it from a Zamorakian wizard. It's clear that your response from my suspicions are correct. This incantation is written on very thin flesh. A horrific practice only used by Zamorakians. I mean, yeah, that's pretty rough. First, though, I'll do a thorough and arcane analysis of this incantation to determine if it's safe to cast. Now, as for your other three wizards, can't be wasting the others' time. Trayvon has three new apprentices who get out. Beef them whilst I inspect this incantation. Okay, cool. There we go. Um, I need your help with the incantation. Right now, we're having a party. What? Okay, I've currently tasked each of the apprentices with solving a problem. If they all solve it, we can celebrate together. Okay, cool. So I've got to solve their problems. Earth is five and air is three. A thingy more is less than three. Okay, I'm going to write this down. Right, so this is what I'm working with here. I've got my notepad. Uh, so we've got this is less than three fire, which is less than 15, more than eight. So it's less than 14. It is more than two earth, which is more than 10. Less than three water, 18. Okay, it doesn't help us. And more than three air, which is nine. Again, doesn't help us. So it's, it's gonna be 11 or 12 or 13. 11, 12 or 13. Let's try 11. Hey, we got it right. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, why don't you go tell Cedridor that my apprentices are free to help? Okay, cool, let's go back down to Cedridor. All right, ready to uncover a magical secret that could change the world forever. Let's do this. Are you ready? I am ready. Look at all the goons. They're underwater. Let me cast a locator spell. So we're deep below the sea, just south of Mauritania. Deep below the sea, south of Mauritania. So we're probably somewhere around here. I reckon my theory that this is an old teleportation matrix was spot on. The wizards here must have used the power from the abyss to create portals to the runic altars. Then, with the power from this eye and support from their rune guardians, they'd have been able to create runes at lightning speed. The eye must have had a huge impact on their work. They named the temple after it and fashioned a symbol based on it. In a moment, I'm just gonna cast a simple revealing spell first, just in case there's anything else hidden here. Oh dear lord. Is she evil? Now that is a problem. 
Oh my god, she's got sucked into a rift. Whoa, and then these guys start coming out. And so the rift to the scar is open once more. Humans fight with us. Let us hold back the abyss. Okay. Alright, he's closed the rift. Person gonna come back. We need to go back to the wizard's tower and let Cedridor know what happened. Oh jeez, she's dead. No part of the abyss is more dangerous than Scar. Your friend will have already been consumed. Person's dead. Bloody hell. Is there no teleportation matrix? Kinda, of, but not really. The portal took us to the Temple of the Iron, ancient Saradominus temple built to house a powerful artifact. Long ago, a rift of the abyss was created in the temple. It was sealed, at least. At least it wasn't until Person accidentally opened it again. She was sucked into the abyss and all the abyssal creatures came out. I should have stopped this, but I was blinded by my own desires for that matrix. So what the trade ones are princes? I chose to stay and help the guardians of the rift keep closed. There we go, Temple of the Eye complete one quest point, Temple of the Eye access, 5k runecrafting XP, a medium pouch which is nice, and 30 runecrafting which is very, 33, wait what, that just came out of nowhere. And this now means that we can just start crafting tons of air runes and mine runes to use in mage. Yes, we're here, right, nice. No way, you can get talismans here. I did not know that. That'll sort me out if I need one in the future. Right, now it's time to do tons of Guardians of the Rift or whatever the hell this place is called. Let's get to it. Thank you. 